talk about the DFT, the discrete Fourier transform, which you may be aware of. You can kind of look at a straight formulation uh, in terms of summation over complex exponentials. It basically will have an omega naught, which is sort of a fundamental frequency that basically you're looking at that you're going to have n points past that going almost up to 2 pi. So that way you can kind of see things. And again, because you have a 2 pi periodicity for any sample system. Great. But the interesting thing as you look at this structure is you say, well, wait a minute. This could be a filter too. In fact, if I were to take um, something like a DFT with after every single input sample, that would give me sort of outputs at each of the FFT coefficients continuously. And so you'd want to think, hmm, that's a probably an interesting way to think about filters. Gives you a way to think about how we want the, FF, the DFT to look like, computed by the FFT. Although many times we do a lot of sort of lots of simplifications in the trade because that is, it is computationally expensive. It also gives us a sense of how we might construct filters. Because after all, if I do that, it's going to look something like this, which is after all an FIR filter. And if I'm trying to build an FIR filter, this is an interesting way to sort of look into those questions. Okay. So I could imagine just taking this formulation and finding, say, okay, the K K1 position. And I could say, okay, let me have add a whole bunch of these going from, say, the first input to the last input. And then I'm going to get my output for that tab. I'm just going to call it Y of N because it looks like a filter at this stage. Great. The interesting question here is, what is the first and the last sample? Because depending on how you look at this, you might think of x0 as being the first sample, you might think of it as the last sample, and there's different ways that you can kind of get yourself thinking either way um, on and how the FFTs get talked about. And so that's an, you might say, well, why does it matter? And it actually has a small effect, but it's actually pretty interchangeable in a certain cases. If I talk about x0 as being the last sample in, in the whole case, so I'm thinking that being a delay, you know, in fitting the delays of a typical FIR filter, the formulation I get looks like this, versus if I look at this as being the first sample, my formulation has more of this form, which can simplify down because uh, omega n gives me 2 pi, so this simplifies a little bit. I say, great, I've got two terms. Uh, I can get Z transforms of both of them. I can then look at the frequency response of them. And the interesting thing of the frequency response is notice that I get almost the same sort of solution with one small difference. The small difference is that omega, this is omega minus omega hat, this is omega plus. So this is going to be the minus the frequency, this is going to be plus the frequency, almost sort of like sort of centering it, if you want to say shifting to that frequency. And then around that, look at the formulation. It feels exactly like a boxcar type of filter. Boxcar filter of the size of the FF, of the FFT or the DFT. So if I'm taking a 32 point or a 256 point, that's a very, very um, large boxcar kind of filter that's being frequency shifted to the frequency that I'm looking at on that channel. And in fact, you can look at the plots of this in a 32, in a 32 DFT. And again, I looked at it for the negative version or the positive version, which is then 23 or nine. It's a 32 bit, 32 point case. And this is actually the kind of structure which, if you notice, is very, very steep in the one frequency and then rolls off. Now, it's not zero, right, because I get zeros in related terms, but there's still some finite amount of energy that's in the lower frequencies. And any real filter is going to have some amount of components like this. But this gives us an idea of what we're seeing. And of course, if I shift it to a, a different value, I get 13 or 19, 5 or 27. Really cool that you get this. If you look at a 256 point case, you get the same kinds of structure for four different examples. And if you look at it closely, this is a very, very narrow filter now. You kind of zoom, you can kind of already tell how tight this is. You zoom into it, you can see how narrow this is. But I still get the side energies here, much like I had in this case. But this gives you a sense of a filter. It also gives you a sense about how tight of a filter I could imagine, how tight of responses I can get with single taps. And it gives you an ability to kind of say, okay, what would this look like? It gives you an ability to say, okay, maybe I want to smooth these questions out a little bit. It kind of eventually gets people into windowing questions. Um, but it also says, okay, let's say I want to make a filter and I have a frequency response that I want. 
this is a way that I can possibly achieve it.